goals that were not defined. It was pretty chaotic. And it just didn't look right. And you're thinking, this is, this is bull crap. There's got to be something better than this. Because uh, this is just all, you know, like, just categor categorizing stuff. Uh, black magic, and people just didn't know what they were doing. Physics is a quest for simplicity. This was chaos. Why? To help crack this mystery in the 1970s, the United States built Fermilab, a high-energy research facility 30 miles outside of Chicago. Fermilab sits on top of the Tevatron, a four-mile-long particle accelerator. Nobel Prize-winning experimental physicist Leon Letterman conducted many of his experiments here, but for decades, he groped in the dark like everyone else, trying to make sense of the messiness of the quantum world. Little by little, more and more particles got fed into the hopper, until there were a couple of hundred particles, you know, as, you know, in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, and then people started organizing these particles into family groups, and out of this, late 70s, early 80s, came the organization called the Standard Model. But it was a gradual process. And it's like a jigsaw puzzle. You got the right piece and everything fell together and there was the, the painting on the box cover. After studying thousands of these jigsaw puzzles, physicists began to understand what they were looking at. Rob Roser runs the giant detector that takes pictures of matter and antimatter collisions inside the Tevatron. Behind me is an event display of a proton-antiproton collision occurring inside the CDF detector. You can imagine a proton coming from one direction in and out of the screen and colliding at the center point. And so by looking at the bend or curvature of the particle, if it's curved in one direction, that particle is positively charged. If it's bent in the opposite direction, that particle is negatively charged. So if we just break this event down, you can see a single long pink object pointing to a big pink cluster. The more the color, the more energy that particle had. So you can see here is a single particle that gave up a bunch of energy right in the initial part of the calorimeter. That's indicative of an electron. Over here, you see a single line that's giving up energy in the back half of the detector, more characteristic of what a muon object would look like, a muon being a heavy electron. So we can start to get a lot of information by just looking at a couple of very simplistic ideas in terms of where the particles travel, how much they curve, and where they deposited energy in the detector. Today, after years of reading these subatomic tea leaves, physicists feel they are getting closer to answering the question, what are we really made of? The stuff that we are made of today only requires maybe a handful of little particles. The atoms on the outside are electrons whirling around like planets, if you like. There's a nucleus in the middle of the atom, which we used to believe was made of protons and neutrons. Well, it is. But deeper down, they in turn, by going to the heart of the cosmic onion, are made of little things called quarks. And two types of quark, an up quark and a down quark. And that's it. An up and a down quark joined together in different ways ultimately make the atomic nucleus, an electron whirling around the outside makes the atom. Throw in a neutrino, which is created in radioactive processes, and that's the basic particles that make up everything that you see around you. There's also the photon of light, which we are seeing with right now, and that pretty well is it. Most of the atoms in our body are made of nuclei and electrons, and the nuclei themselves are made of protons and neutrons, and the protons and neutrons are made of quarks. And, of course, you say, what are the quarks made of? And that's where we, we're stuck. For the last 40, 50 years, we've been studying the quarks, try to find something inside, and we get the same results we had for the electron. There's nothing inside. The quarks don't have any size. The size, the radius of the quark is zero. It's a little bit like Alice in Wonderland. Remember when Alice saw the Chesser cat sitting on the branch of a tree uh, with a big smile? Uh, and much to Alice's great astonishment, right in front of her eyes, the Chesser cat started to disappear. And finally, poof, it was gone. But it left behind one component, its smile. That cork smile. 
is a tiny box stuffed full of energy. All matter is actually made of energy that has congealed into particulate form. So that appears to be what we are made of, at least as far as we can see right now. But knowing this opens up an even greater mystery, which is, why does the stuff we are made of behave the way it does? Our explorations of matter reveal that everything is nearly hollow. You, me, and everything in the universe. It's all empty space with a few pinpricks of matter floating in a void like rocks adrift in the vastness of space. But how do these pinpricks of matter form into shapes and structures? There must be something holding it together, some sort of glue in the ocean of emptiness. The question is, what?